Welcome to Rap Shot, where we talk movie and TV appreciation, theory, and filmmaking. Before the internet, movie trailers were only seen on TV and during the previews at movies. You'd get two minutes of the best bits of the film, probably accompanied by a voiceover. The time has come to bring him back into the 90s. Having a look at the comments section for the Austin Powers' The Spy Who Shagged Me feature film trailer, we can catch something that reveals a lot about how movie trailers have evolved. It's like they were saving the fact that Myers also plays the villain, Dr. Evil, as a reveal for the theatre, Smiley D-Face. This suggests a time when some things were kept a surprise until audience members saw it in the cinema. So why do movie trailers now feel so spoilery? Before we address this question, let's get into a brief history of the movie trailer. The fine folks at Filmmaker IQ, with a link below, notes that the formulas have stayed pretty much the same since the 1910s. Short examples of the film enticing people to see it. They're a marketing tool. First with titles, and then when sound came in, the ubiquitous movie trailer voice played before and sometimes after the feature film presentation. It did also get a bit creative in the past. You had some approaches like this, where the filmmaker or even a character in the film breaks the fourth wall and talks directly to the camera, like the delightful trailer for Ernst Lubitsch's Shop Around the Corner. I would like to introduce you to some of the people who work in my shop. First, I'd like you to get acquainted with my head salesman, Mr. Kralik, played by James Stewart. The increasing popularity and growing affordability of television sent film trailers into people's home. There is a creature alive today who has survived millions of years of evolution. Jaws spent $700,000, a whopping $3.9 million in today's money, on TV advertising alone in 1975. Eventually, the internet did to movies what it's done to everything else, made things faster and somewhat worse. I'd argue that since the movie trailer moved away from captive audiences, such as in the one cinema in your town, or on the one of two or three TV channels on your television, they've had to compete with a soul-crushing amount of online content. Marketing material also goes further for free on the internet. In the bad old days, you had to pay a lot of money for a top prime TV slot or for a picture in the newspaper. Now fans and non-fans can get themselves excited and share it for free. And filmmakers and the companies they hire to promote their films want exactly that. They want people to know about the film, to be excited, to see it on the day it comes out. And here's where we pivot to the work of industrial designer Raymond Lowey. Mr. Lowey knew that people wanted products that were bold and cool and exciting, but also recognised consumers' desire to feel comfortable with an unknown object. Basically, to treat consumers like a small bird. Show them something shiny, but don't scare them away. I'd argue that this is what has happened with movie trailers. They've tried to walk the fine line between revealing a brand new, interesting and bold product, but also trying to create a sense of familiarity. And that's where we get into spoiler territory. See, I thought that massive spoilers in movie trailers was a more recent phenomenon, but that actually might not be the case. I think they have been getting worse of late, but they've been going on for quite a while. Look at the trailer for the 2000 film Cast Away, starring Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks, Helen Hunt, Castaway, great. Combo, corporate guy, crashes his plane. Yep, has to survive in the wilderness. Will he do it? Will he make it? Oh, wow, amazing, amazing transformation. That would have been, that would have been a cool surprise, you know, watching the movie to see that happen. Will he get off the island though? Like that's the big, oh, he does. Okay, cool, great. Will he reconnect with Helen Hunt? Of course, after all these years, you know, are they gonna, oh, they do. They reconnect. Great. And that is the final shot of the movie by the looks of it. Okay, cool. I'll close YouTube tab and close Netflix tab and go to bed, I guess. I have a dumb idea that no one should listen to when it comes to movie trailers. Just don't look. Just don't look. Well, maybe avoid not looking at it at all, but try this. Stop the trailer at 30 seconds. I'd argue that's enough time to give you a sense of premise, characters, plot and tone, and anything after that is spoilerville. And I know that is easier than it sounds. Humans are, scientifically speaking, gossipy little bitches who desire closure and love to recognize patterns. It's kind of our thing. Let's try this 30 second rule with Dr. Strangelove or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb from 1964. This film trailer is pretty bizarre by itself, but if we stop it at 30 seconds, are you not intrigued? Is nothing given away? Would you still want to watch the rest of the film? Attack! 
Russia. Oh. Oh. Base. Ten females to each male. I've realized that talking about spoilers in films, I've got two general categories of movies that I enjoy. The fast food, fun-filled cinema that gives me what I want, and the films that surprise and challenge me. Spoilery trailers take away those surprises, those challenges. So do yourself a favor and try and give those moments back to yourself. Limit your movie trailer watching time and see how that goes for you.